Dudes, what's happening? It's Trent here, and I landed myself a sweet gig with Sketchbook Pro. They are sponsoring a Hearthstone eSports tournament, and they have asked Mua to handle the banner illustration for this event. It seems only appropriate since I have done so many trading cards for the actual Hearthstone game, finally getting the respect that I deserve. And the only requirements, they basically said I could do whatever I want, the only requirements are that it fits into the art style of Hearthstone, no problemo, and uh, also that uh, it uses characters that you would play as in the game. So I got to do whatever the heck I wanted with it, and so I chose to use Malfurion Stormrage and uh, Gul'dan, what's his last name? I have to Google this. Ghoul, <laughs> first name Ghoul, last name Dan. So if you ever find yourself getting a gig like this, the very first thing you probably want to do is collect all the information you're going to need. Get yourself plenty of reference material. You want to know the character design and not just other artists' interpretation of the design, but what is official artwork from the developer you know, so that you can be consistent with the way that they're supposed to look. You know, I'm not doing anything fancy here in this early sketch stage. It's really just just like anything out of a sketchbook, you know, literally. That's the cool thing about Sketchbook Pro. It's literally like drawing with pencils and paper. And so I just kind of sat down and started doodling out cool character drawings based on this reference material and really trying to capture who they are and some of the expressions that they have. And I did a little bit of shading with one of the texture brushes. In order to lay down color, probably the best way that I found to do it, at least for laying down flats, is to set up a layer for your line art, set that to multiply, and then paint in all of your flat colors. And by flats, I just mean kind of a 50% tone. It's not heavily in shadow, it's not heavily lit. It's just a 50% tone of that color. I was sort of exploring a little bit and I tried the colorize layer, but I found that it was just a little bit too saturated. So I went back to a system that I know usually works, which is to lay down some flats underneath the multiplied line layer. This is the part where everything just starts to get really exciting. This is the most fun part because we've got our colors in place. We have our composition in place. We know where everybody's gonna be. We know what they look like. We know the plan for the details. The plan is set. Everything is put into motion. Now we just get to enjoy the thrill and the pleasure and the sweet mindlessness of just adding fun detail. Little patterns, little etchings, little cracks, little carvings, little renderings of, of leather on the, on the buckles and the pouches. All the fun stuff that really doesn't require quite as much thought process. At this point, it just sort of becomes second nature and I just fall into the painting, have a good time with it, and I already know it's gonna, everything's gonna work out all right. But conversely, if your sketch is jacked, just stop right now, buddy. Go back to square one, start over, because otherwise you'll be regretting it through the whole painting. Then what I did was I began to elaborate a little bit more on my line arts and add a lot more detail to it. As I said, I really got a lot of freedom with this one. I didn't even necessarily have to stick with the same style that I do a lot of the Hearthstone cards in. I was really free to play around with a little bit more of the kind of detail and line art expressiveness that I like to do in my own comfort zone and my own style of work. And if you watch most of my videos on my channel, you'll see that lately I've been getting a little bit crazy with doing a lot of line art detail. I just kind of find a little bit of a zen space and kind of go into a mindless state of just enjoying doodling around and adding materials and little details and hidden little gems within every drawing that I've been doing. 
Now that we've gotten a lot of our flats in place and a little bit of our atmospheric color, I like to go in and start to add a little bit of detail over the top of all of that. So just, just using kind of a pencil brush over the top of everything and adding in some of my highlights, a little bit of rim light. There's always a lot of push and pull. And I think that when somebody who doesn't draw or, or somebody who isn't as experienced with it looks at a piece like this coming together, there's this idea that everything is set, that I could visualize it before I began. And that's really actually not the case. It sort of comes together in the same way that a conversation comes together. You know, when you're speaking with somebody, you don't know how they're going to necessarily respond. You have an inkling of how to handle certain questions or, or interactions that you tend to defer to. But for the most part, it's still always a work in progress. It's something that is always unexpected. It's always something new. And that's kind of where a lot of these videos are really enjoyable for me to, to watch the process you know, after the fact, because I get to see how that conversation with the canvas really went and what kind of unexpected challenges popped up along the way and how I solved those. You know, and I, I have seen myself grow a lot as an artist from recording my process. It's something that I would highly encourage you to do if you're considering that you want to improve your drawing skills record your own process, do your own commentary. And it, by all means, if you have a, an art channel, dude, let's link up, S hook me up, send me a link to that. I would love to see your processes. I would love to see how you guys draw. I'd love to see how you're growing and how you're, you're evolving as an artist. One of the things I'd like to do on this channel is that I'd like to go through a lot of my old sketches and my old drawings and see just how I could improve upon them now. And I cr a lot of it is very cringe cringeworthy, <laughs> believe me. I have a lot of old Warcraft art that I did from Burning Crusade that it's a little embarrassing to look at now because it was so long ago and I've learned so much since then. But that's kind of the beautiful thing about it. If you're very critical of your work, and you're very critical of what you're doing now, that means that you're growing. It means that you'll always be looking back on your old work and feeling like you can do better now. And that's really a, a, an awesome thing uh, to have documented. So it's it's New Year's and um, you know everybody's doing their resolutions and goals, setting goals for the new year and things that they want to accomplish and things that they wanna do. And one of the things that I really wanna do is I wanna give more to you guys. I want to be able to do more for my YouTube audience. Uh, I do a lot of contract work here and there, but, and, and these are awesome gigs. They're fun gigs. I get to, I'm, I'm very privileged to get a chance to work on some of the, the coolest video games ever in history. And, and I'm very proud of that. But when I get letters from YouTube followers, uh, and, I, and I get a sense that I'm really helping them to grow or inspiring them in some way. It has such an impact on me. It's so powerful that I want to reach a larger audience. I want to reach more people. And I'd never really taken YouTube very seriously in any capacity, but this year I really want to push it. And I need your help for that. And what that means is I'm going to need you to, to share these videos. If you really like what I do and you'd like to see more of it, and if, you're, if there are specific things that you'd like to see more of on this channel, let me know in the comments section. These things really help me out a lot. If we can reach 50,000 subscribers, I'm not going to dance around in the street in my underwear screaming about it on YouTube. That's not my thing. That's not my style. That's not what I do. But what I can give you is I can promise you more content. I can promise you more videos. I can answer more questions. I want to be your art, your art Sherpa. <laughs> So there you have it, dudes. That is the Hearthstone illustration for their eSports event. Uh, I want to thank uh, Sketchbook Pro for having me to do this piece. It was quite an honor, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video of it. If you're hardcore, if you're super hardcore, and this is like, pff, this is too fast, because it was sped up a lot. It took me 20 hours to do this painting. But if you want to watch the three hour version, slow down a lot. You can see the layer effects. You can see the brushes that I used. You can see all the details. I have all that over on my Gumroad channel in the box set of tutorials, volume trace, volume three. I got some super cool stuff coming up soon. I'm gonna be showing you a lot of the old artwork that I did when I was a kid and uh, it's pretty bad, but uh, you can see how I progressed throughout the years. I got some uh, cool fan arts that I wanna be posting. So if you do a fan art of any of the Twilight Monk characters, uh, please hashtag me, uh, CC me. <laughs> Uh, tag me on any of the social media sites that you post on and uh, I will feature it on my YouTube channel, which is a pretty sweet deal. All right. Uh, for everybody else, dudes, I will catch you all manana bon, and as usual, remember always to draw with the passion. Catch y'all manana bon, a peace out.